morning, Gospel Center. Good morning. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Lord, thank you for gathering us this morning. And we come in the promise of your word that says, when two or three gather in my name, I am there. So thank you for your presence, Lord. Reveal yourself to us as we worship. May we encounter you, Lord. As we're in this place, may we encounter you, God. May heaven come down in Jesus' name.
So I pray, Lord, that you'd be lifted high. Jesus said, if I be lifted high, I will draw men. So Lord, we pray that you'd be lifted high. Amen. Be lifted high. So you draw us, Lord, firstly, in our lives that yes, will be Lord. coming to you because you are lifted high and exalted. And in our world, Lord, that is broken and deprived mm -hmm. and depraved, we pray, Lord, that you be exalted. Yes, Lord. Where we've tried to draw men to you, we've failed. But now we just pray that you be exalted, Lord. And that you draw men to yourself, Lord. And this nation that we love, be drawn, Lord. Be exalted and drawn the world to yourself, God. Our world needs you. We need you. Yes, Lord. This is our prayer, Lord. Be exalted. Yes, Lord. Be lifted high, oh God. Yes. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on the day of battle, arrayed in holy splendor. Your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. Father, we praise and thank you in the name of Jesus that you are omnipresent, omniscient, and unchange the unchangeable one, the ancient of days, and the ruler in the midst of our enemies. We thank you for the generation that is arising. We ask that you awaken their sleeping spirits and bring them into the light, as you gave your angels charge over each one to keep them in all their ways. Thank you that you pour out your life-giving spirit in this generation and reveal your word to each one. We pray that they will hear a trumpet call in the spirit to arise as a mighty army, one body, one force, one weapon in your hand to stand against evil in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, shining as lights holding fast the word of life. We place our young people under the cross of Christ. Cover them with the blood of Jesus and shield them with a wall of fire against every attack of their enemies. We prophesy that, in, that a Daniel generation is arising, which will unveil the scroll that has been written for this day and for this time. Amen and amen. amen. We declare and decree the voice of Almighty God is trumpeting through this generation, it, releasing the warrior spirit, making them as bold as lions, and that as they prepare for battle, their voices will rise before the throne of grace. We declare and decree that our young people will walk on the highway of holiness, with clean hands and pure hearts, under a banner of righteousness and purity. We bind every humanistic mindset that would come against the youth in our nation. And we lose each one to know that they are their father's treasured possession, chosen and dearly loved. We bless and pour forth the family treasures that are to be released within the generational structure of the family unit. Parents, children, and grandchildren. We bless the work of their hands as they work side by side to establish the kingdom of heaven and earth. And we bless the great I am as he raises his banner of love over each one. Father God, as your children go back to school, to college, to universities, to new work and new situation, we cut them under the precious blood of Jesus. And we pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit will not cease from blessing and protecting them. Lord, may they not lean to the things of this world that are so evil, but that your light will shine before them, and that your hand will guide them, guide them, gently guide them on as they live each day. Father God, keep their eyes focused on you, and not on the things of this world. For the things of this world will wane away. But your love, O oh Lord, will stand steadfast, and your word 
Oh God will not return to you holiness. So we bless your holy name and we bless your children and young people. Yes. And all those, oh God, who are following new paths in this new season. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord, we do pray for those going to university and colleges yes. uh, in this month of September. And pray that Jesus be lifted high. Amen. As they go, Lord, Jesus be exalted. May they not yes. lose their way. May they not lose themselves. May yes. they find you even more in the things that they're studying, with the friends mm. that they make, in their finances, in their whatever mm. they, is they go through, Lord. May they find yes. Jesus exalted yes. in their lives in the relationships, Lord, with yes. their friends, with their teachers, oh God, I pray that Jesus be exalted in Jesus' Amen. name. Also for those coming to London, Lord, for university, yes. coming, Lord, to our region, to our borough, Lord, yes. for education, may they find Jesus exalted Amen. as well. Lord, Amen. Lord. May they find the King of kings upon his throne, ruling and reigning with wisdom, with power, yes. and with love in Jesus' name. Amen.
um, I saw the I saw a picture of an axe, and I feel like the Lord wants to cut off situations, negative situations, uh, specifically on finances. Maybe it's debt. Maybe there's some struggle financially with jobs. Um, just if if you feel that's for you, uh, go to after after church to the prayer team and just let them pray for you and, and release and agree. Um, for the Lord to just um, win that battle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Still in worship mood, can I ask Brother Simon to come forward with the communion? Please don't let the Spirit pass you by. The ready for hear what God will say to you today. God bless you. Thank you. You know, I'm one of those people, I've always thought through my, through my life, you know when there's a, there's a break or there's, there's some benefit or there's something that's going to um, uh, be an advantage to you, I always just miss out. I never get it. It never hits me. I'm just underage. I'm overage. I earn too much. I earn too little. I doesn't apply to me. And I've always missed out. Which kind of like built up a resentment in me. I'd never get anything. I never get anything. I think I deserve it. I've worked all my life. I work hard. I think I should get something. And then two years ago. I just, Unbelievable, I know. <laughs> and I got my oyster card. <laughs> and I thought, at last, I've got something. <laughs> and I sit on the bus sometimes for one stop. <laughs> just because I can. You know, but we always think this. Uh, we always th we always think that we're always entitled to something. And why do we miss out? And you know, when you go on the trains and when you go on the buses, I was I was on the Victoria line uh, this this week, and you're crushed in, and it's so hot, and I'm thinking, really, is this a benefit? What am I doing here? Is this a benefit? But do you know what? It made me think about the story of the woman who was unwell, had an issue of blood for 12 years. It says in Mark 25, Mark 5, 25. Issue of blood for 12 years. She'd seen the doctors, she'd seen the best, she'd spent all her money. You could understand that she perhaps had a sense of entitlement. I think something should go my way. I'm getting worse and I'm spending the money. I'm seeing the doctors and I'm getting worse. You would say, she would say, you, and you would feel, well, do you know what? Fair enough. You've spent all your money. You've been to see all the experts, and still they're doing nothing for you. Then she heard Jesus was coming by. But Jesus, like anything, had a crowd around him. He attracted people to him. So do you think she had a, a, a sense of, oh, really, I can't be bothered? All those people, and it's so hot, and it's so... Oh, am I going to do this? Is it worth it? No, because she had that spring of faith within her. She just said, I don't even need to talk to him. He doesn't even need to see me. He doesn't even need to say anything to me. All I need to do is touch the hem of his garment and I'll be here healed. So I'm sure it was a little bit like the Victoria line. She got her elbows going. She started pushing. She started shoving, she was moving, and she could see him there, and she battled through that crowd, and she touched the hem of his garment, and immediately she was healed. What no physician, what no amount of money, not, 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 not what any man on this earth could do, healed her from top to bottom, because her faith had made her whole. And what did Jesus do? Who touched me? Who touched me? <laughs> Imagine on the Victoria line saying, excuse me, I need some space here. You wouldn't get it. But he said, who touched me? Not because of anything else, but because he, I believe he felt her faith. I f believe he felt her determination, her understanding of what he re represented and what he was for her. 
He said, who touched you? Faith has made you whole. You know, it says in Mark 2, verse 17, that, that Christ didn't come for those who are well. Who are well doesn't need a physician. He doesn't come here for the righteous. He comes here for the sinner to show repentance. Now you might say, well, does that mean it doesn't come for everybody? We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. Which then translates that Christ came to this earth for all of us. And that's where we come to. And how do we remember that? And what did he do for us? He came to the cross where he died for us. He took the sins of ourselves upon him so that we may touch the hem of his garden and just be his. And so we've come to, come to the table which represents how he went to the cross, but it also represents how he rose again. We follow a living God, a living Christ, someone who lives within our hearts, someone who is a part of our every day, whether it's what we've heard about finances, job, family, health, home, travel, Whatever it is, he has an interest in everything that we do. And so there we can, he, he, he left this for us so that we could come back to this point in time to say we understand what you did for us, that you didn't come for the righteous, you came for me and he came for you. And that's what we remember when we come to the table. So let's come around the table today and remember that Christ died for us. That he, we, it's not because we're entitled, because if we thought we were entitled and we deserved it, none of us would be able to achieve that. But he came because he loves us. Because heavens are singing in glory that he is risen. And so let's come to the table today and just remember that you have somewhere to come to, to bring your troubles, to bring your happiness, to bring your sadness, to bring your family and loved ones, to bring anything to the, to the table, to at the foot of the cross, because that's where Christ resided, where he died for us, but he rose again, and that we have hope in him. So let's share today the bread and the wine, uh, what Christ did for us, and uh, we can share together. Is that okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I've gone all 21st century and have everything on my phone these days. Look at that. Would it be possible to have two or three just to come and help me uh, around the table? That would be lovely. Thank you very much. Let's just come in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, as we come to the table to remember, Lord, what you did for us, not out of uh, entitlement, not out of any uh, um, uh, thing that, that we deserve, Lord, but you did it because you love us, that you took our sins to the cross with us, Lord. You enabled us to have salvation. You enabled us to have life in abundance, Lord. And we just uh, uh, come now to remember what you did, that you died on the cross but rose again, Lord Jesus. And we bring all our lives to you, Lord Jesus. And we say thank you, Lord. And we come knowing that we can just touch the hem of your garment, Lord, and you will make us whole. For the Lord on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen.
Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to partake of this emblem of the, your body and your blood. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to run through a couple of announcements quickly. Uh, we're very mindful of the time, so Pastor Tino will have a, enough time for his sermon this morning. Our speaker this morning is Pastor Tino. First and foremost, can I just welcome every one of you that is here today. Some of us, I can see faces I've not seen for a long, long time. You're welcome. God bless you. And those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time, you're welcome. That the Lord bless you. Bless you real good, and you will not be disappointed you came today. Amen. And those who are returning, you're welcome again as well. Thank you for coming. And I'm sure this day is your day. You're not here by accident. The Lord bless you as you fellowship with us today. Amen. Some of you had seen the notice boards already. You had the announcement sheets, so I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to draw attention to two or three things that we need to know to them today that we, we need to take note of. On Saturday, the 7th of September, there was going to be a Raleigh Street party. That's, Raleigh Street is the street that goes down from there all the way to the Duckets Common. A um, couple of people within the community are gathering together to have a street party, and Gospel Center happens to be part of the Raleigh Street, so we'll be there present as well. If you can make it, please turn around, come join the celebration, and share the love of God amongst the people of the street as well. The, it's from 12 to 6 p.m., the Lord bless you as you come on the day, okay? There will be food, live music, DJs, kids entertainment, and if you would like to do anything on the day, contact, um, there's a contact number on the sheets, please follow that. The name is Laurie, and the contact information details are there, okay? Um, the other thing I want to draw attention to is every Sunday we serve coffee and tea after the service. Please endeavor to put your name down to do this service unto the Lord. Amen. Every other thing is on the sheets. Um, it's on the sheet as well. There is praise and worship on Thursday online. Well, for those of you who cannot join, you can join it online as well. It's on the sheets. So please endeavor to attend or join online on the day. Last week was wonderful. Some of the songs we sang today, I lent them on Thursday online, okay? So join, you'll learn new songs, you'll learn things that you needed to know, and the Lord will bless you real good. And there are a couple of birthday this month of September, and they are on the list. They, there's just one that fall into this week, so we'll announce that. And that is for Grace, um, Grace of Begidi's birthday. And the Lord bless your new age this week and strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen. There are a couple of wedding anniversaries as well. We have that of Simon and Tina. Simon is the communion preacher. Amen. And Tina, on the 3rd of September, that's Three days from today, two, three days away. Okay, and um, there's another one this week, and that's for, okay, <laughs> for Grace and um, Ovi as well, okay, on the 6th. And a couple of letters and messages. We have letters from the Message Trust appreciating us for the gifts. Please read all the information here. We'll, and the Lord will bless you real good. One more thing. We've arrived at the third half, the third of the year, the third section of the year. Isn't God amazing? Gen uh, January seems just like yesterday. But through it all, there have been testing time, challenging time, time to laugh, time to weep or feel sad and joy. But through it all, God has been faithful. If you want to stand, you want to remain in your seated position, I just want you from the depth of your heart to just appreciate the Lord for just a minute. 
Just give God thanks. The Bible says, if it had not been for the Lord who has been on our side, if it had not been for God, we had been falling long time ago. Things that do not. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. I can go on and on, but just appreciate God for what he has done. Appreciate God. Give him praise. Give him praise for a moment. Just appreciate God for a moment. Just thank him in your seated position. Just give him thanks. Father, thank you. Lord, you've been faithful. You've been faithful. You've been our help in ages past, even our help for years to come. Father, you are a faithful God. Regardless of the storms, the news, the happenings around and far away, Lord, you've remained at our stay. But from the depth of our heart this morning, or rather this afternoon, we have come to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for protecting us. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' precious name, we've given thanks. Amen. Can I welcome our pastor, Pastor Tino, to the mic. The Lord bless you and pay undivided attention to the word of God today. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you Father, too. thank you for your son, O oh God, as he brings the word. Mm. Let the glory, the Shekinah glory, vested upon him this day, come alive in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. Uh, honestly, always a pleasure to come and worship with the Gospel Center. I used to hear Pastor Brendan say this every now and then, and now I've been here a few months, and I know it from my heart. It's a pleasure and a privilege to come and worship together with you and to share God's Word with you. Uh, greetings from Fari, who isn't here today. Um, but as I mentioned last week, I think you'll understand. Well, maybe you weren't here last week, but um, we are expecting a lovely child soon, and uh, she's quite far in the, in the journey. So uh, we had family actually come and celebrate yesterday with us. Uh, not quite a baby shower, but the family wanted to celebrate, so we had them yesterday. And so she's quite exhausted and um, there with, with mom and a few others. On that note, also with me this morning, or afternoon now, is my cousin, uh, Clint, and his son. So, I welcome to him. Uh, yes, but greetings from Fari. Amen. Um, also wanted to really encourage all the parents to, in the coming weeks, encourage your children uh, or the children to be involved in the final week of every month. We're planning to have a family service, so we're hoping that the children will be involved with us as we're leading the service. So whether it's in singing a song, or it's maybe a memory verse, um, or maybe it's sharing, being part of the message with, with Tino, uh, but do encourage them, please, to get involved on, on this, particularly the final week of every month. Uh, some are quite shy, so it helps if everyone encourages them and say, we're looking forward to such and such that's coming up. Uh, and it'll allow us all to worship the Lord together on the, on the final week. The service will be, will keep in mind that we have a family service, so it won't be, I won't preach too long if it's me preaching. Um, and if it's a guest, we'll also let them know that uh, we, we are trying to have it so that it accommodates the, the teachers and the young children who are taking part in the service. So that will We'll start doing that at the end of this month, uh, end of September. Uh, I think that covers all my announcements and to-do list things to mention. Um, I wish Farah was here so I can double check again. But that covers all of it. I thought someone was going to correct me. Psalms one, Psalm 23 we've been going through for the past few months, um, and we're nearing the end of it. I know last week we had a, a lengthy kind of detailed teaching, uh, but today I've come with a more ex expository sermon, just to expose God's word to us. Um, I will recite some of it because we've been through it so many times, I think you all know it now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your stuff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And today, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I have a short message today, and that's the point. It's a very simple point. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. The Bible says in Proverbs that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And many of us don't tend to realize that goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives. Many of us live our lives unaware that there is goodness and mercy pursuing you. Uh, that the, the song we sang in the, in the worship was intentionally placed there today to remind us that your goodness is always running after me. All my life, God has been faithful. When I think of those lyrics, they are like a prayer to me because when I, when I stop and consider and I look back, when I take stock, I can see that God has been with me every single step of the way. When I was still born, when I was a, a baby in my mother's womb and she didn't know that I was in a womb and something seemed to have gone wrong and the doctor said, okay, you seem to have miscarried and she was given tablets to wash away the baby, yet here I am preaching in front of you. They failed to abort me when I got stuck in a tree in a car accident in 2018 and the doctors came and I was stuck in hospital four days in a coma and yet still I am here standing and preaching before you. When I take stock, I realize that God's goodness has been pursuing me every day of my life. Church, I could go testimony after testimony, sharing how God's faithfulness has been there in my life. If you took stock, if you chose to stop and look into your life and look at every hazard that has come your way, everything you've complained about, if you took stock and thought of your health, how you're still sat in this church, you would realize that God has been faithful. All your life, God has been faithful. Today isn't a day of teaching some difficult things and saying, here's what stops the anointing and here's how to bring the anointing. Here's a day to encourage you and say, God's goodness and his mercy is pursuing you every day of your life. But if I don't realize that, oh, and here comes the difficult challenges now. If I don't realize that, if my mindset is set on poverty, if I think like, you know the prodigal son story, there's two sons actually, not just one prodigal. There's another son also in that story who complains and says, but father, all my life I've served you. All my life I've slaved for you. How come when this one comes, you throw a party for him? How about me who has been faithful to you? And that story for me highlights that verse from Proverbs that says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The father says that, this, everything I have has been yours all this time. But this son that was once lost has come back. Why don't we celebrate? The father is saying, your mindset has been wrong. He's been serving as a slave for all his life because he didn't realize that actually, instead of chasing good things, the father has been chasing him with good things. I want to encourage the church this afternoon that God is chasing after you. God is chasing after you. The psalmist David says that even if I went to the ends of the earth, still you would find me. If I went to the very depths of the earth, still would find me. If I went to where the sun sets, there you would find me. Where can I go from you, Father? David cries out to God. We would do well to pause and think with David as well and say, God, you are faithful to me. You are faithful to me. I have a story to share from Genesis chapter 37. A lot of scripture to read today. We want to go through the story of Joseph fairly quickly. If I do more reading, I do less talking. That means we get through the sermon quicker. Uh, it's a joke. I'm learning the jokes now to share with the gospel center. I'm slowly learning what lands, what doesn't land. I'll keep trying. Jacob lived in the land where his father stayed had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zopah, his father's wives, and he brought them, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his brothers because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made him a richly 
ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him. All the more, he said to them, listen to this dream I had. I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood up around mine and bowed Sorry, my, my sheaf rose and stood upright when, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and moon and 11 stars all were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well, his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is a story of Joseph, which I think most of us will know. And uh, so we, don't, we need not go into great detail about it, but a few points we to, to think about and consider as we realize that God's goodness and mercy was following Joseph. If we look at our lives too, we'll see that there's a similarity. I know that biblical scholars and uh, those who study theology realize that Joseph is a type, uh, a type, a foreshadow of Jesus actually. But then Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I send you. So when we look at both Joseph and Jesus, really you can see how God intends to love you. I read in the first few verses that uh, Joseph was a young man who was loved by his father. And I loved how um, Simon introduced the, 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 the communion today and talked about how basically we would love to receive things because we deserve them. But actually, we receive from God because, we, because he wants to give us, not because we've done anything to earn anything from him, just because he's chosen to give something to us. We receive salvation because, not because we're good enough or because we've tried enough or because we've prayed enough, but simply because God has chosen us. Jacob is loved simply because he was born in his father's old age. Not because he was anything special, not because he was particularly lovely or because he was handsome. He was handsome, the Bible will tell us later on. But that's not the reason why his father loves him. It was just because he was born in his old age. You know one decides when to be born. Like I shared, I could have actually died. I should have been washed away by tablets. I should have been ab aborted because, rightfully so, not because she didn't want me, but because I would have been a health risk to her, to my mother. I should have been aborted, but God decided that I would be born. I'm not loved because I decided to be born. Jo Joseph is just born, and his father loves him, not because of something he has done, something that's totally out of his father's hands and out of his own hands. The Bible tells us that he was loved. Same as you and I, church, we are loved. You are loved. God loves you. Not because of something you could do. You can't tithe enough. You can't offer enough. You couldn't pray enough. There's so many of you this morning, but you couldn't attend church enough for God to love you. He loves you anyway, whether you attend or you don't attend. Please come again. But whether you attend or you don't attend, God loves you immensely. He would die for you if you were the only person on earth. Preachers have said many times, and I should repeat it, if you were the only one on earth, God would still die on the cross for you. God loves you, and you couldn't earn his love. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 would say that it is a gift that God has given to you so that no man can boast. He has given salvation to you. He has given faith to you. Hence, you don't even have to work up your own faith. He gives it to you. Such good message this is. I hope it's blessing you. Joseph was chosen, not for anything he had done. So from the get-go, goodness and mercy are following after him. Even in his poor decision skills, in his poor decision-making, and I think he made a few poor decisions, ones I wouldn't make anyway, uh, but you are allowed to think otherwise. The first thing it tells us is whenever his brothers would do something, he would go and tell them his brothers, I think it's a poor decision because I have brothers too. And if Tam, my youngest brother, decided to tell on my little things, whatever I was doing growing up, we knew that we don't like Tam because he is, there's a, there's a famous reporter in Zimbabwe called Ruben Barre, 
and would call Tam, a, a reporter to say, he, whatever you do, he's always going to go and blab. He's always going to go and snitch. No one loves a snitch. There's a saying in the streets that snitches get stitches. I don't know if you guys knew that. Maybe you're also holy, you don't know about snitches. Snitches get stitches, so we're here. And yet Joseph is a snitch. He snitches on his brothers, yet still Jacob loves Joseph. Joseph gets a dream, and the Lord speaks to him. He gets a dream where he sees sheaves coming up and come, gathering around him and bowing down before him. And Joseph thinks, let me get a good idea. Let me share this wonderful story with the people that hate me, the people that are trying to give me stitches. Again, I think it's a poor decision. <laughs> and yet God is still giving him dreams. God is still speaking to him even while he's making these poor decisions. I feel and I'm convicted that none of us here are really wiser than Joseph. We too make some poor decisions. We too have made some poor decisions. If you think you haven't made poor decisions, some would say you haven't lived young, long enough yet. But if you've lived long enough, you, you can always look back and see, that wasn't the best of my decisions. I could have done this slightly better. Yet even then, God is still speaking to you. Isn't it amazing God's faithfulness? God's word says that even when we are unfaithful, God still remains faithful because he can't deny himself. God's goodness and mercy is still chasing after you, even through your bad decisions. Like I said, I really, I was excited six months ago when I was planning this sermon to get to this point where I tell you just good news, God is chasing after you. I'm not saying go and make bad decisions. But I'm saying even through your bad decisions, you can't outdo the grace of God. It's not a license for sin. No. Romans will teach us that, what shall we do then? Are we saying sin some more? He says, God forbid, don't sin some more. But what I am saying is no matter how much you have sinned, you can't outdo the grace of God. You can't outdo the blood of Jesus. You can't outdo that's such precious. The song was making me weep. Oh, precious is the flow the blood of Jesus, you can't outrun his grace even through your bad decisions. Even through your bad decisions, God is still speaking to him. And so he tells the people who are getting ready to give him stitches and says, I've had this dream. And they hate him all the more. What does God do after that? God gives him a second dream. <laughs> God is insistent. God is, is in covenant to be good to you. He's, he's committed. He's covenanted to be good to you. And when you read through the scriptures, there's so much support for this fact that God is committed to be good to you. James would say that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. The Bible also says in Matthew that he causes his son to rise on the righteous and the unrighteous. God is committed to be good. There is judgment day coming, but it's not today. There's judgment day coming where our deeds shall be weighed, that shall be put through fire, and some things will remain. I hope our deeds remain. Some things were burnt because they were not worth doing. But today, until that day, God is committed to be good to you. He's committed to be good to you, no matter what you have done. And if someone watches this later on online, I know we're not online right now, but if someone watches this later on, be saved, turn to Jesus. No matter what you have done, turn to Jesus, because there's nothing you could do to separate yourself from the love of God. If you were in this room this afternoon, and you think, oh, I blew it, I did something, I was unwise, I want to encourage you, there is nothing you could do if you still have breath in your lungs. You still have reason to praise God because the blood of Jesus still covers you. It still covers you. It's still setting you free. It's still speaking over you. It's still rooting for you. God's goodness and mercy is chasing after you. God gives him a second dream. And oh, I love Joseph. He tells the, the stitches guys again. He says, I had another dream. And this time, it wasn't just you guys. The sun and the moon also came and bowed down before me. He should have learned the first time when his brothers hated him all the more. So now he gets a telling off from his dad. He just says, what is this dream you're having? Do you really think that me and your mom will also come and bow down toward you? God is still pursuing Joseph. I hope you have a dream too. I hope you allow yourself to dream. Things that people around you think unthinkable. 
People around you can't say that, how could you do that? You don't have the enough education. You don't have enough experience. It's been so long you've been praying for that matter. Do you really think that could come to pass? It's been so long you've been doing this thing. Do you really think you'll still succeed? I pray that you, like Joseph, keeps dreaming. You keep hearing the dreams, even when the naysayers keep speaking to you and responding and laughing at you and mocking you and perhaps even hating you for the dream that God has given you. Why? Because God's goodness and mercy is chasing after you. I hope that you don't get tired and start trying to chase things around you, but know that actually it's going to come to you. Good things are going to come to you. As you seek God, as you keep him first and you seek his righteousness, the, all these things are going to be added unto you. His goodness and his mercy are chasing after you all the days of your life. He doesn't have an answer, but his brothers hate him all the more. He's been rebuked, the Bible says. He's, he was rebuked by his father. And he, however, the father, does something that reminds me of Mary. The Bible says that he kept this matter in his heart. He kept this matter in his heart. When Mary was told about all the things that Jesus would do, she didn't understand. But the Bible tells us that she kept this thing in her heart. My prayer is that we too would learn to keep some things in our heart, to keep that faith alive, keep believing, remain hopeful. The Bible says, as a man think in his heart, so is he. I'm repeating a few scriptures. I'm hoping that by the end of this sermon, in a few minutes, you will go home saying the same things. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. God's goodness and mercy is chasing after me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. So we didn't read this part, but the Bible continues to describe how Joseph was sent then by his father uh, because he's so good at, at snitching. The father gets to realize, I need to, if I want to know what's going on, I'll send my CIA son, whose name is Joseph. I'll go and, he'll go and you'll find out. So he says, go to your brother's who are with the sheep out there, they're grazing, and see how all things are doing. Verse 14 says, So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring, bring word back to me. Joseph goes there, and he's looking for his brothers. Verse, uh, verse 16, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? The person answers them, They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. I just wanted to read that briefly because it often, I think Joseph expresses some feelings that I have felt at some point. And there may be someone else that has felt these feelings. Maybe you haven't, but there may be someone that, like Simon, Simon almost preached my, ser uh, my sermon, who always feels like I should get something. I should be, I should be entitled to this by now. I, I, I am the youngest anyway. I, I didn't do anything to deserve all this stuff you're doing to me. I, I'm just obeying my father's commands, and you, I'm just sharing the dreams that God has given me. And all I get is more and more hate. And I'm the one that's not left behind home. When I come in and find you guys, I'm hearing that you've moved on. And it feels like everyone else's life is moving on while you are just continually pursuing something. And I'm encouraged to find that at least Joseph, at least there's a man, there's two people at least. There's Simon and there's Joseph, who I realize that actually... There's a God who is more concerned when others haven't given me what I thought I deserve. There's God who will urge me forward. There's God who will bring me to what I deserve. Not because I have worked for it, actually, but simply because he is good. Simply because he is good. He finds that his brothers have gone ahead of him. So he's told where they are, and they go, he goes to them. And then they say, here comes the dreamer. They mock him as he's coming. They begin to plot against him. I said I'll be short, didn't I? They begin to plot against him. And they're planning his demise. And they say, here he comes. Why don't we kill him? Why don't we throw him into the, the, the well that's here, the pit that's there? And um, fortunately, there is a man there called Reuben who says, what do we gain if we throw him into the pit? We get this coat that he has, we drench it in blood and go and tell his dad that the son was torn apart by some wild animal. What do we gain? Let's just put him in there and leave him in there. And the Lord spoke to me and reminded me of Psalm 91. 
which says that the Lord has commanded angels concerning you. So that when you fall, you won't strike your foot against a rock. The Lord has commanded angels around you. It doesn't matter how many people are hating you. It doesn't matter what people are saying about you. Even when you were rightfully, or whether you were uh, unwise in your decisions and saying things you shouldn't have said to people, or whether you didn't say anything wrong at all, you're just going to look for them, and they're plotting against you. God's goodness is chasing after you. He's made his mind up to protect you and the dreams he's invested inside of you. If you still have breath in your lungs, you have reason to praise God. You have reason to believe because there's angels, sometimes in the form of Reuben, sometimes your brother, sometimes your, your mother, your father, your friend. There's always someone fighting for you, even if you may feel like they all hate you. There's still someone fighting for you because his goodness and his mercy is chasing after you. So Reuben speaks up for him. He's thrown into the pit, and there's three things that you may go through, just like Joseph did. The first thing may be a pit. We, we often, there will be times in life where you're in a bit of a pit. Yet God's goodness is still there because he's defending you. He's still defending you. Imagine while he's in the pit and he's meant to die there. The Bible goes on to describe that there's no water in the pit. It's a dry place he's in. He should have been crushed when he fell into the pit. In such a pit that he can't come out. He should have physically, he should have been crushed. And yet here comes some merchants. And out of the note, the Bible says, while all this was happening, merchants were coming towards him. In verse 36. And then the, they, they decide to sell Joseph to these merchants. It's funny, actually, when I read that, and, and I read it without being too spiritual, how, how Joseph might feel, thinking, oh, goodness me, first I went into the pit, now I'm being sold as a slave, but this is actually what's saving his life. And many times in our lives, we don't realize that the things that are happening, though they may feel to be bad, God's goodness and his mercy is chasing after us. It feels like it's a bad happening to us, but actually it's his mercy that we're being sold as a slave. The things that are happening, if we could trust that our lives have been placed in God's hands, the things that are happening in my life, no matter what happens, it is God's mercy that's happening to me. Romans chapter 8 says that he works all things for the good of those who love him and are called to his purposes. Whatever it is that is happening in your life, God is working it for your good. He's working. Imagine God himself is working for your good. He's causing all things that are happening, whether it looks like it's good, whether it's health or it looks like bad health, whether it's a job or it looks like a loss of a job, whether it's a death, whether it's a new life that's coming into your, into your family. God is using all things to work for your good. I may not be able to explain it, but what I do know is eventually that means he's now a, a leader in a house. He, the Bible tells us that even Potiphar himself was so blessed abundantly because Joseph was in that house. Are you with me, church? He's gone into a house as a slave, and yet, as a slave, the household becomes blessed. As a slave, he advances to the point where Potiphar is no longer concerned about anything going on in his house anything at all, to the point where even his wife is now lusting after her slave. That's uncommon. I don't think there's any amount of handsomeness that would make you lust after a slave. But when God's favor and grace is upon you, you, be, you begin to excel even the most unreasonable places, unexpected places. You begin to excel. God's goodness and mercy is chasing after you. I'll read just one more scripture as we close. It's a long story, so perhaps it was ambitious to try and finish it in half an hour. But the Bible says in Romans 8.34 that Jesus is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. He's interceding for us. And I think that is good reason to believe that everything is going to work out for you. Everything is going to work out for you. No matter where you are in life, you may find yourself at the beginning where you're just the youngest and yet God loves you anyway. You may find that actually you've been sharing your dreams, yet God loves you anyway. Maybe you've made some unwise decisions, but God loves you anyway. And he's fighting for you and he's even interceding for you. 
You may find that there's times where perhaps you forgot to pray, yet God, Jesus himself, is praying for you. And if you thought Pastor Tino is praying for you, there's someone even better. If I got tired, if I got busy, Jesus himself is praying for you. If you got tired and you got busy, Jesus is praying for you. It's not a reason not to pray, but it's a reason to be encouraged. To say, even though I'm in a pit right now, even though people have turned against me, even though no one is believing in me, God is still interceding. God is fighting for me. Even though right now I feel like I'm a slave, Right now, I feel like things have been sold out and people have backstabbed me and people are plotting against me, but God is still with me. God is still for me. I thought it would be good as we close because it was, this was just an encouragement to sing that song again about how God has been good. If we could allow ourselves to think, even as we go through this week, to reflect on the things we've been through, like I shared some things about my life, and you would think for yourself and say, I hope you will see that God has been with you. That he has been with you in the darkest time. Through the fire, he was there with you. That he's been speaking with you. When family betrayed, he was still a father for you. And he still is even in this moment. And that goodness and mercy are chasing after you. Is it okay if we stand and sing? I didn't mention to the team, but if you don't mind coming and singing with, with us, please, the, the worship team. And after we finish singing, if you need ministry in any kind of way, please do come to the front row and there is a team that's ready to pray with you.
say together and surely goodness, goodness and, and mercy, mercy shall, shall follow, follow me all the days of my life, life. And, we and we shall dwell live in the, the house of the Lord, Lord forever. forever and ever. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you.